two. Okay, all right, let's say that you're right. Let's say that you're right. I've always kind of wondered about that, but I never really knew. But you see, things kind of go okay for me. I mean, yeah, I have some bad days and all this, but pretty much everything goes pretty good. Yeah, well, that's a lie too. You know, you're bad shit. Matter of fact, you're so bad shit that every single time that you think about talking to me or letting me in, everything else looks better. What do you mean? What? And once you let me in, they don't want you to open that door and let me in. You see, they're going to make you think even better things await you if you don't let me in. Amen? You may be getting more money or you may have a better house that you think that you're going to. Anything is the limit. Anything. if I think that you are going the wrong direction. You see, I know the way that is going to get you where you need to go. 
no matter what you see on that window, I know. I've been looking at, it's going out places, and I'm not real sure. It kind of looks a little sketchy to me, and I really don't know that I want to go down those roads. Yeah, I know. Matter of fact, you probably would have never chose that. But that's the way to get where I need you to go. You see, the place that I want you to follow is narrow. And it may not look like that's the one you would have chose. That's the one you got to follow. And remember, it isn't you driving anymore. You made that choice. It's me driving. You need to sit there 
and you need to go with me. And remember, not only am I driving, I'm not getting out of this vehicle. I'm going to stay here forever with you. All I got to do is ask me, where are we going? Well, I'm going to take you to my father's house. This is the way to your father's house? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, can't you just go by this place first? No. No, no, no that place is not going to lead to my father's house. Matter of fact, it's going to set us back to get there. You see, what I learned in Israel was when Christ was talking to the disciples and the people, it was made relevant by what they knew at the time. If Christ was talking to us today like he did the people and the Beatitudes, or his disciples, he would use illustrations of our present day to explain what he was talking about. Amen? <clears throat> so, as we're looking at this, we now have a partner in our car with us. Now, we may not see these tires being fixed every day. We may not see all this other work that's going on to our car every day, but we know that every single day he said he's going to fix something. Right? And it's better than what we were at. It may not be perfect, but it's better than what we were at. You see, he's perfect. And he's making us perfect. But now, we're his. We belong to him. And we trust in him because he drives. Does that mean that we have to have blinders on and we can't see anything around us? No. Matter of fact, remember the guy that was fooling us to begin with? He still throws all kinds of stuff up. six packs of beer on the way home. You remember this place? Yeah, that's that place I used to gamble a lot at. And I won a lot of money there. But the truth is, I lost a little bit too. And I still kind of like to go there. You see, here's the thing that I wonder about. And I know it seems like I jumped around Watching, please forgive me, but I hope I'm making a simple enough to follow. <laughs> David, King David, and the sheep. We're going to talk about that for just a moment. And I'm going to tell you what I saw in Jerusalem, in the city of David. You see, they were stone buildings. Here, they were close, very close. And when Bathsheba was on top of the building taking a bath, you probably couldn't help but see this woman taking a bath on top of the building that you're right next to and you look out the hole. Huh. <laughs> what did I see over there <laughs> on the building? You see, was it a sin that David looked at her? No. Listen close to what I'm telling you. We will be tempted every single moment of our life. Your temptation may not be mine. Doesn't matter because the guy that's not in control anymore still wants to pull us out of that car and go with him. It became a sin for David when he didn't stop looking at her. And when he didn't stop looking at her, it suddenly became...
became easier and his conscience started to get less and less and less until what happened? Until he acted on what he was given in his mind. When he did, then what happened? Then sin came. Amen? So, we're going to see this stuff. We're going to see stuff that's attractive to us that want to pull us away from Christ. Except, here's the deal. Jesus said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. What God has given me, the devil cannot snatch out of my hand. What can happen? There's one thing that can happen. We can decide that we aren't going to allow him to drive anymore. And we are going to decide we are take a closer look. Amen. In my, and I want to make this statement, I believe that once you have truly committed your life to Jesus Christ, and you have made that commitment to God, your salvation is secure.
You mean to tell me if I go out here and I sin right now, yeah, it's already covered, it's already taken care of. How can that be? I just did it. Yeah, well, he just did it too. Because he already knew what you were going to do today. What? Yes. So what does that mean? It means then that he covered your sins and your sins Because he knew before he ever died.
into driver's car. It's already been done. What do you mean? We're talking about predestination, right? <coughs> Depends on whether or not you want to look in the future. You know what the future is. He knows. It brings a whole different reality, doesn't it? Paul's words then brings a whole different definition to how you've read, read the scripture. Therefore, you are no longer sinners. What? What do you mean I'm no longer sinners? I can still, still do bad things. If you do them, they've already been forgiven. What do you mean? If you do them, grace covers them. Well, what happens if I do more sins? Well, then more grace covers them. Well, then should I go out and do it? No. No. Because remember, when you truly have asked Christ in your heart, and you truly have been changed, you don't want to do that anymore. You just don't. What do you mean? Well, I don't know. It just means that bar doesn't look that grand anymore. I can't explain it. Have you ever tried to explain what it's truly like to be a Christian to someone who isn't? There is a difference between saying, ah, oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. Really? Tell me about that. Well, you know, I go to church and I pay tithes and I say some prayers and stuff like that. You know, if there's a Christian thing, then I kind of go over there and follow them with the group. Okay. And plus, not only that, but my mom and dad and my grandparents, all those people were Christians before, so I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian. Now let's go into a different part of what the Bible says. How do you know that they're Christians? By the what? Fruits. By the fruit. And one says, oh yeah, I have faith. I've got a bunch of faith. And the other one says, what? I'll show you my faith by my works. Does that mean works are what saying you? Absolutely not. It's Jesus Christ in your heart. It's the Holy Spirit that you've allowed in. And when you do, you start bearing fruit. Other people around you see it. What? I would have never done that before. Why did you do this one? I don't know why I did that. It's not something that I would have normally done. Let me tell you what happened. You had a conversion, and Jesus Christ now lives within you, and you bear fruit. Out on bearing some fruit. Yeah. Well, here's the rest of the story. He loves you. But he wants you to bear more fruit. How do you do that? He prunes you. What do you mean? Well, he kind of cuts some things back in your life. Sounds painful. <laughs> it is. It, trust me, it is painful. And nobody likes it. But you know what? In the end, you're going to be bearing a bunch of fruit. You'll be like this beautiful tree bearing fruit. And you'll sit back and go, well, check me out. Check it out. Look at me. Man, you've really been good. No, no, that's the trick. I haven't done nothing. He's been driving. I've just been sitting over here going along with what he says. And he promised me that he'd do that. He's doing it. Wow. Really? Yeah. It's amazing. I feel totally different. I don't feel like the same Jeff anymore. Well, you're not. You see, when you let him in the car, you actually died. Remember us talking about that? And I said, die. Yeah. Yeah. You 
you submit. The old Jeff died in 1976. When I went down in the water, it was as though I was dead and buried in the grave. When I come up, it was though I rose, but not me, Christ rose. So you understood that from very beginning? No, 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 I didn't understand that from the beginning. I didn't understand a lot of that. Matter of fact, I really didn't understand our anything. I just went to church, read a Bible song, and then I'd make some big mistakes and go back to church. And you know, say, I was sorry, blah, 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 and all this kind of stuff. But you know what? All those sins were gone. And all the sins that I would commit from there on, remember what I told you a minute ago? I had already died for. And washed away. I knew a lot of you were looking like, wow, I never thought of it. Yeah, well, I had not either. Trust me. <laughs> I had not either. You see, some people will believe that Christ has to be crucified all the time. Constantly crucified. He was crucified one time. For what? For everything ever. When he hung on the cross, he said, it is finished. What's that mean? Finished, finished, done, finished. So, okay, so let me see if I get this straight. I'm just a passenger. Yeah? yeah. I'm not really driving. No. Anything he says to do, you do what he says. He's driving. And he's going to fix my car. He's going to fix me. And I don't have to do nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what about all the expense of all the repairs? He's already paid for. You see, if we got it all fixed all of a sudden, what might we want to do? Because we're just humans, right? If we knew that we were in a junk car and now the car is made perfect, we're being made perfect, and it was given to us in that perfect state, what might we want to do? Follow something that we shouldn't? You see, because as we go through this life, we're learning, we're constantly learning, we're constantly being taught, we're constantly figuring out it is in fact better to give than to receive. It is, in fact, better that if I have two coats to give a coat away to someone who's cold. You see, it would be better to know that, hey, look, I had breakfast this morning. Yes, last time I'm kind of hungry. But this person hasn't eaten in two days. I have no problem giving them my food. Amen? And do I have any repercussion or recourse or bad feeling by that? Absolutely not. Matter of fact, I feel pretty darn good. Well, guess what you just did? You bared fruit and didn't know it. Are you kidding me? That's what it's all about? Yeah. And the next thing is, we're supposed to pick up passengers along the way. Well, what do you mean? Roll your window down and start, start telling them that you've got a driver named Jesus Christ who's taking care of everything. And you couldn't be happier. The Great Commission. What's it say? The Great Commission says that we are all disciples of Christ once we've given our life to Him. And we should do what? Tell others. Neither am I. Truly, I'm not. I'm not. I'm kind of uncomfortable about that. Uncomfortable about that. Am I like a Pharisee or Sadducee? If 
by being one of the ones who follow the law so strict. They know the word like the back of their hand. I don't. I don't. Well, God says, don't worry about it. Because I give you the Holy Spirit, and He will let you know what to say when you need to say it. Really? Yeah, really. Really. So then, all I have to do is just do what you can. What do you mean, do what I can? Like water, the garden of water. If you feel like plant some seeds, plant some seeds. If the fruit's ripe and you feel like pulling it off the vine and harvesting it, do that. Don't I have to do all the wall? No. You see, some people will come along and water it, some people will come along and pick the fruit, some people will come along and set the seed. It is all about discipleship and all about what God said for all of us to do. Amen? So, what then? What then? What then? What then? I have a person who comes up who says that they're a Christian and they're worried to death all the time. Bull. If you're a Christian, and if Christ is truly driving you, he says, don't worry. Okay, so why? But I can, still can't, because you're not trusting. Yeah, but what happens if it goes bad? Then it goes bad. Well, what happens if I've been praying for such and such, for such and such, for this person for a long time, and nothing happens? Guess what? It's not in your power anyway. Amen? Think about this. We're not afraid of dying, right? If you are afraid of dying, then we need to pray with you and for you. Because you shouldn't have fear. What happens if I pray for this person and they just don't get better? What's your job? When Adam and Eve were in the garden, they were told what? What were they told? Don't. They could eat. They could do anything they wanted except one rule. One rule. There were two. There were two trees there. One was the tree of life. And the other one was the tree of knowledge. And God said, don't touch this. Don't even look at it. Why did he say don't even look at it? Remember what David did? Now, follow me. I know it seems like if you're going down a rabbit trail. It's not really. Follow what I'm saying. What led to sin? God knew that if you look at it, you're going to be Hold. Don't even look at it. Amen? Did they die? Not a physical death like the king, not right immediately. Which made Satan look like he was telling the truth. Really, he's a big liar, always a liar. And he lied then. He lied to Eve and deceived her, and she ate from the fruit and gave some of the fruit to Adam. But here's what happened. Was it about the tree? Did it have really anything at all to do about the tree? No. I tell my little kid, look, love you. I'm going to bust your butt if you get out of that room again. Why? Because you go out in that road and you're going to get hit by a car and it could kill you or hurt you bad. Stay out of the road. And here it is, I'm going to tell you again. If you even walk over there close to the road, 
your trouble. If you get in that road, trust me. We'll wear you out. That's a deep story, kind of, isn't it? Isn't it about obedience? If the kid goes out in the road and plays in the road and doesn't get hit by a car, what does that make me look like?
that stole cuffs like a sailor, killed animals, was mean to people. How's that child being raised? What will it do? It's going to be the same way as mom and dad is. And it's going to be the same way that it was raised. Am I right or wrong? God said, do away with them. Get rid of them. God also told man, he said, look, don't go out here to these other women from other tribes, from other nations. Why? Because they're not pretty? Because they can't give you children? Because they don't speak your language. Because their idol worshiping will influence you. Don't go there. Don't look.
there and he sees him laying there in his state, beaten, bleeding, and he stops. And he picks the guy up and he puts him on his donkey. And he takes him to an inn. And he cleans his beard, his wounds up. And then he pays the innkeeper a certain amount of money and he says, hey, look, um, Tend for this guy whatever he needs. Take care of him. Which one showed the love of his brother? The guy that took him to the end. Do the same. Well, that was kind of like a slap in the face to the attorney, wasn't it? What does that mean for us? That means then, if somebody comes to you and needs something that you can do for them, and you look at them and say, hey, listen, you go ahead and go down your way. God bless you, and I hope that you're filled and everything goes good. And you know that she's hungry. And you don't do anything? Shame you. Did you show the love of Christ? Your works, your faith by your works. I'll show you my faith, and the other one says, I'll show you my faith by my works. I'm not going to send you on the way here until you're filled. I'm going to make sure that you're not hungry when you leave here. And if you need a coat, I'm going to do whatever I can to give you a coat. And if I don't find you a coat, I'm going to give you my coat. Why? Because I'm looking for a reward? No. It's because that is what Jesus would do. Amen? Look, I run around all kinds of different things, and I can't help it if I have a Holy Spirit that jumps inside my body, and praise God for that, but I just have this stuff coming out. And I want you to understand, when you leave here, you don't have to do anything except love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and love your brother as yourself. And if you don't know him, you have to read the Bible. Because if you don't, you're not going to know anything about it. You've got to have a relationship. And it's not based on your, my relationship with him, or Ricky's relationship with him, or your mom, or your dad, or your brother, or your sister, or your children. It has to do with what do you think. Do you feel? Has he truly touched you? Look, if you don't know Jesus Christ, I can't even explain what it's like to live with the blessed assurance that Jesus Christ died for me. Not only did he die for me, he lives in me. I don't live anymore, but Christ lives in me. And you know what? I don't care if I have troubles in this life or anything else. I can go to him. Sure, I don't like to be pruned. I don't like for him to correct me. I don't like to get spankings every once in a while. I don't like it. It's not fun. It isn't good. I don't like what this world has to offer. Amen? Amen. 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 <laughs> but, I opened the door a long time ago with this guy in the name of Jesus. Ever since then, he's been driving. And although I've been looking all around out the windows and doing things sometimes I shouldn't do, praise God, he died for me. And I know, the Bible says, not the gates of hell, not Satan himself, can snatch me out of God's hand. Not going to happen. And if I do mess up, I go to him out of obedience. It's like a kid who got on the road. It's just a little bit. I'm on the road. He says, I'm not. Trust in me. And you 
listen to me. Promise I'm going to take care of you. And he puts his arms around you and he loves you. Now, if you don't know Jesus Christ, then I know that on your faces. If you don't know Jesus, truly have never asked him in. Like maybe you know in your heart you've never done. Come up here. Jesus says if you confess his name, then go confess your name in front of God. He says. If you're afraid, if you think you'll be ashamed, if you think people will point at you or make fun of you, go ahead. Go ahead. Do you know how long they've been pointing their fingers at you sitting in that parking lot that you never knew about? Going, look at this nut in that car thinking he's going somewhere, but he's really not. You know how long they've been doing that? Long time. Come on up. Please. Please come on up. Let me pray for you. Love me and want you. Let's give it all to Jesus, shall we? Let's walk out of here today totally different. <clears throat> Let's all walk out of here today going, you know what? Yeah, I got troubles, I got problems, I got aches, I got pains, but you know, I know where I'm going. I know who's got me in their hand. It's okay.